Hi students, uh, today I wanted to explain to you the programmable array logic device. This is abbreviated the PAL. So we talked about the PLA, we talked about ROM, um, but this time uh, PAL, um, it's similar, we'll say, similar to the PLA, but it has a fixed or array. And um, a programmable and array. Okay, so it's only the ands are programmable, so it makes it easier to program, but it also means it's not as flexible as the PLA, but it's a little bit easier to understand. So let me show you the general architecture. <clears throat> Example of a for input, for output, um, programmable array logic. So if we have four inputs, we'll have input A, and here is our inverter buffer gate. So what comes out of this is A and A naught, and then we have B, and we're going to need B and B naught, C input, C and C naught, and our D input, D and D naught. Okay, so then I can bend these wires down like I did before. So here is D. Let me move this over so you can see it. There you go. So there's D, and this is D naught, and then we have C and C naught, and here is our B, and we'll need B naught, here's A, and our A naught. Okay, great. So then from here, next comes our AND gates. So all of these are potential connections to AND gates. One, two, three. So suppose this has room for three AND gates, and then this goes into an OR, and here's our output. So we can have multiple of these. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And on the end of each one of these are ANDs going to an OR, and there's our F2. And here's ANDs going to an OR, here's our F3. And, and, and going to an OR, and here is our F4. Okay, so this is the part that's static. This is the part that's programmable. So we can burn in connections between any of these lines, but um, as you can see, we're limited here because if any of these functions that we're trying to store on this PAL um, have more than three product terms, that can be a problem. But there is one thing that's kind of nice about these, and that is um, these have feedback capabilities. So um, how that works is if we need to, we can grab an output here and we can um, invert or not invert and we can pipe it over back over here to our inputs. So let me show you an example of when we would actually use that. So um, suppose we have problem that asks us to program a PAL to implement the following functions. All right, so let's say we have W is a function of A, B, C, D, and it's sum of terms 2, 12, and 13. Suppose that X is an input of A, B, C, D, and these min terms are 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then let's say function y is a function of a, b, c, d. And it's the sum of them in terms 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 15. And then lastly, b, c, d is in terms 1, 2, 8, 12, and 13. Okay, so suppose this is the problem that we're given. We have um, three functions we want to put on our PAL. So these outputs here, I have labeled f1, f2, f3, f4. We're going to implement yx, wx, y, z. Okay, great. So um, the first thing we would do is we could um, write the output table and then we can simplify using k maps we'll need k maps for each one of these inputs we've done a lot of that and um, there's a lot of functions so let me just tell you what I got here so this is w is a b c not or a not b not c d not and y no the x there we go x equals a plus b c d y is a not b or c d or b not d not and then finally z is a b c not or b c d with that not not and not or a, C, D, those knotted, or A not, B not, C not, D. Okay, cool. So after we do our Carnot map, suppose we get this um, simplification. It's okay if there's an error from what these actually are. The point is, if these are our functions um, given in Boolean algebraic form like this, um, you'll notice that Z has four product terms. So if we have a PAL like this, we can only have a maximum of three product terms here. So that's how this is kind of limiting, right? Because this is what we have to begin with. And whereas with the PLA, we could put in as many product terms as we wanted to. Here, we're limited to three. So um, with three product terms going into an OR and one product term going into another OR, we're gonna see if we can um, do any simplification here. So you'll notice that this thing right here should look kind of familiar. This guy right here is the same as that. So this we can actually write as the function w, and then we can <coughs> add the rest of these product terms. Okay, so this thing here, uh, mm, the sum of products that implements w is kind of a subset of all the product terms for z. So this is going to be ex an example of how we can use the output from one of our functions as an input to, to be a product term in another one of the functions. Okay, great. So um, since we have four inputs and we have a three wide and or array, there are going to be spaces for um, four times three or 12 product terms. So you can see that on here, we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 product terms. So how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we're gonna be good there and then this one we can, um, we can reuse. So let me write this in a table for you and then once we put in the table, we'll be able to figure out how to burn, how to program this grid right here. So product term gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So if you look at the picture here, I'll put these side by side so you can see. These product terms 
are going to be implemented by these three AND gates, right? So these three are coming into the first OR. So we can kind of like separate these. These three are going into the second OR. These three go into the third. And these three go into the last OR. Okay, so then if those are our product terms, also on this table, let's put our um, AND inputs. So these are our inputs. Make some room here. A, B, C, D. These are our inputs to the AND. Okay, so if the product term to make my first function W, the product terms are A, B, C naught, then um, I'm going to need a, B, C naught is going to be 1, 1, 0, and I have no connection to D. Okay, so this right here makes this first product term. The second product term for the, my first function output is A naught, B naught, C, D naught. So I need A to be 0, I need B to be 0, I need C to be 1, and I need D to be 0. So this w function only has two product terms, so that means I don't actually need my third and. I don't need that guy, I only needed these two. So these guys are going to have no connection. And this makes the output a, b, c naught, or a naught, b naught, c, d naught. There's my w, that's my first output function here. My second output function is x, and um, my first product is a is 1 and there's no connection to b c or d okay that makes this guy and then the second product term is b c d so i need b to be 1 c to be 1 and d to be 1 and i need a to have no connection doesn't matter so here there's two product terms so that means i also don't need this third and and this is going to give me a or B, C, D. Okay, great. So then my Y function has one, two, three product terms. So I'm going to need all three of these AND gates. These one, this one, this one, this one. So my first product term is A not B. So I need A to be 0, I need B to be 1, and I have no connection with C and D to make that guy. The next product term is C, D, so I need C to be 1, D to be 1, and A and B don't matter, so they're not connected. And then I need, for my third product term, B to be false and D to be false, so I need a 0 here, a 0 here, and A and C are not connected. And this makes my Y output function, A not B, or C, D, or B not D not. Okay, great. So then... Now for this Z. This guy has one, two, three, four product terms. I only have three AND gates here. So um, I found a clever way to basically put the output from W as one of the inputs for my Z function. So that means that kind of an honorary input is going to be the W and I can put it up here with my inputs as kind of like a quasi input. So what this is going to look like on my table is to make this thing here, this is W. So I have no connection with my original inputs but I do have a W. So that's going to be my first kind of product term is this W. Then I still have A, C naught, D naught. So A is 1, C is 0, D is 0, B has no connection to make this guy. And then A naught, B naught, C naught, D is 0, 0, 0, 1. And this makes my Z function W plus A, C naught, D naught, or A naught, B naught, C naught, D. Okay? So now how do we structure this? What's the architecture look like? So if this is our table and we want to put it into this architecture. We're going to program this grid right here. And 
here's my table. What do I need for this first and? Well, I want this to be A, I want A, B, and C naught. So I'm going to make a connection with my A line, my B line, and my C naught line. You guys see that? Let me scoot this up a little bit so you can see. Okay, so A is connected, B is connected, and C naught is connected. And this makes my product term a, B, C, not that comes out of this AND. The second product term for this first function is A naught, B naught, C, D naught. So A naught I need, I need a B naught, I need a C naught, um, I need a regular C actually. So I'm going to grab this one and make a connection and then I need D naught. That guy right there. And then my third AND gate, if you look at my table, I don't need it, so it doesn't need to be connected to anything. Okay, great. So that's going to make my W. That's my W function. Then for my second function, I've got this guy. This is my X function. I'm going to need um, A. So A is my first product term, so that's the only input that goes into my first AND gate. My second AND gate needs B, C, D, so I'm going to need a B, I'm going to need a C, and I'm going to need a D, and then my third AND gate I don't use, and this is going to give me my output function X. Then this third grouping, I have three product terms, so I'm going to need all three of my ANDs. The first one is A not B, so I grab an A not, and I grab a B, connect those. My second one is C, D, so I grab a C, I grab a D, and that's connected to my second AND. My third AND is connected to a B naught and a D naught, and this gives me my Y output function. Then finally, I'm at Z. Now this was the weird one. This one I'm going to use my W function as an input to this. So this is how it works. I need W, I don't need W naught. So I connect to the output, I grab this from the buffer, and this becomes my honorary input W. There it is. And I make a connection with one of my ands. Okay, so this is that feedback capability, and I can do this for any of my output functions if I need them. So if you see any duplicates and product terms do this, especially in this case where we have more than three if you're limited by a three by four grid architecture like this one. Okay, great. So we made our W. Um, Z also has A, C naught, D naught. So this last one will be A, C naught, D naught. And then finally, A naught, B naught, C naught, and D. Okay, so this is the programming that we did, and we used this feedback capability um, to make these um, four output functions in a PAL. So let me know if you have any questions for how to make that. If you were to expand this out, these honorary inputs would basically be w, w naught, x, x naught, y, y naught, z, z naught. And if you had space in here, you can kind of like push this open and put those honorary outputs here. And if you need those um, for to implement any of the other functions, then you can grab them. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the programmable array logic.